Hello everyone, I'm Daniel with Hexcrafting and I want to welcome you to the first video for the channel. Today we're going to go over my process for quickly cutting large numbers of hexagons out of foam for use in crafting. My purpose is to use them in creating custom maps for the game Battletech, but the same process can be used with many other games. Twilight Imperium, Settlers of Catan, Ogre. Gloomhaven, Warhammer Quest, Blackstone Fortress. These are just a few of the many games out there that use hexagons due to their tileable nature. By following this process, you too will be able to quickly make hexes for your games. Now let's get started. Before we begin to the cutting of the hexes, I need to go over a bit of terminology in order for what I'm saying to make sense. Just give me a minute or two as this should go through pretty quickly. Now what you're seeing here is a typical hexagon. It has six sides. Each side being a specific side length. The two sides connect at a point called a vertex. I'm going to refer to them as the corners. The interior angle between the two sides comes to 120 degrees. And this is very important because that ends up being the main thing that complicates cutting this in a quickly repeatable fashion. Now, moving on, the hexagon will have two more important lengths that we need to mention. The first is called the long diagonal. This length determines how long one of our cuts will need to be when we're cutting our hexes. The long diagonal is the distance between two corners that are the farthest apart. The other length is called the short diagonal which we're going to commonly refer to as the hex size. This is our second important distance. The distance between the two corners that have one corner in between them. This is the distance between two sides of the hexagon that are parallel to one another and is the most common indicator of sides. Don't believe me? Go online and do a look for typical hex in Battletech. You'll find that it's generally said to be one and a quarter inches. This means it's one and a quarter inches across the short diagonal from hex side to hex side. All right, definitions out of the way. Let's move on to a bit of math. And by math, I mean using an online calculator to tell me some numbers. For my use case, I'm gonna be building Battletech custom maps, but I wanted some additional size to the hex to make it feel like it had some more distance. As such, I decided to add about half an inch to the size of the hex. Wanting to do this in metric, I went to Google, did a conversion, found that 1.75 inches is 44.45 millimeters. I rounded up to 45 as a nice number. Good so far? Excellent. So, take the hex side that you want and find an online hexagon calculator. I'm going to use the one at omnicalculator.com, but any of them should do. Knowing that hex size is equivalent to the short diagonal, we plug 45 millimeters into the calculator to get our numbers. This gives us a short diagonal of 45 millimeters, a long diagonal of 51.96 millimeters, and a side of 25.98 millimeters. Now, fair warning. We're not going to be laser cutting, so there's going to be slop in the numbers here. I rounded them all up to give me a short diagonal of 45, a long diagonal of 52, and a side of 26. This makes it much easier to measure using a ruler. Even with this, you're going to find that during your time, as time goes on, you'll end up making mistakes, measure things wrong, and such. But remember, in the end, it's only foam. So, planning done, let's head to the bench. Okay, let's go ahead and go over the tools that I'm going to use. First off, we have the Proxon Thermocut. Uh, this is a hot wire cutter uh, designed to cut foam. Uh, think of it sort of like a scroll saw or a table saw. It cuts using this thin metal uh, metallic wire here, and it has a fence. Now, uh, there's some issues with this fence. 
Um, the, the general idea is that you'll be pushing something up against the fence like so and moving it against the wire which is hot um, but uh, the, the proxon fence has an issue where uh, if you end up pressing on it, uh, it can wobble, which is a problem. You can lock it down the angles on the left there in the center. You have the lock for locking it in place on the track at the bottom. Uh, and the uh, uh, aluminum piece slides in the slot there. But uh, even after you lock it down, if you take a look here, uh, you'll see where we, we lock it down that to lock its angle, and then we lock that to lock its uh, adjustment. If you hold it at the end, it's not too big of a deal, um, but I don't generally do that. I'm generally holding the material right in the center there, keeping it flat. And when I do that, you can see there's wobble on the end, and that's not good for getting a straight cut. So we're not going to use that for this. Let's go ahead and go to the next tool here. Uh, this is a speed square. Uh, specifically in this case, this is a 12 inch uh, Swanson Speedlight uh, speed square. Uh, you can find these in the big box store. Uh, I get it because it has a 90 degree angle there and I found that the edge will actually slot into the slot where the fence normally goes here on the Proxon. Uh, it gives me a, uh, a low uh, clearance fence. I hide it in play, uh, uh, bind it in place with a couple of wedges of um, chipboard uh, which I've wedged down and when it's in there you can see the camera shaking when I'm when I'm trying to jostle this here uh, it will very effectively stay put uh, this is uh, our digital calipers. You see I've currently got it set for as close as I'm able to for 45 degrees, but you uh, lock it at the top and you can slide it back and forth. The bottom jaws will measure the outside of something. The top jaws measure the inside and you get it set. Like Let's go ahead and set this for 45, uh, 47 degrees. Uh, and if I was going to do that, I would butt it up against that wedge in the thing and there you have it uh, very very handy uh, we're going to be using some painters tape later to lock stuff in uh, and uh, we're going to be uh, using the original fence for angle cutting that's pretty much it for this so let's go ahead and get to the first cut now the first cut that I generally like to do on these is the 52 millimeter cut, the, the long cut for this. And this is so that if I go through and cut it up too short, I will be able to scale back. I've got my caliper set at as close as I can get right now to 52 millimeters and we are going to use that uh, to go through and set the fence. So I uh, butt that up against that move it to the line uh, and then I throw we're gonna throw the wedges in to wedge it in uh, let's go ahead and move the camera back a little bit here so you can see so uh, we take our chipboard wedge we wedge it down securing the fence and uh, that so now we have a fence uh, at 52 millimeters uh, going between the edge and the wire uh, and uh, we need to make a test cut first so we turn it on brace our fingers uh, our hand against the the middle there to keep it flat as it goes through uh, and pushing through we move the foam you see it is cutting there uh, due to the heat of the wire uh, and with our fingers there, we're able to keep everything steady. Once this is done, like so, we turn off the machine and let's pull our calipers out and uh, let's go ahead and measure it to see how this looks. So we unlock it and proceed to measure it. We are at, we can measure correctly, just a little over 52 millimeters so we can shorten that up a little bit here so we need to reset our calipers back to 52 millimeters or, or as close as we can reasonably get here
Ah, uh, fun with digital calipers. Good. Lock it down. And remove or loosen up the wedge. And this time I'm going to measure against the wire. The idea uh, is that you are not getting any kind of deflection on the wire. And depending on how your proxon is laid out, uh, there's going to be some minor variances based off the lines. So with this, um, we're going to yeah, just double check it one more time. Yep, we're going to go ahead and turn the machine back on. We're going to run that piece through again and see if we can shave a little bit off of that in a couple of places. Now, the, the, the squares that I'm using are prepared in advance uh, as I like to break my stock down into something that is manageable. Uh, and this does result in me using a, uh, a knife to cut these. And it's not always an even cut as I would like. Uh, so uh, as we run through this again, uh, you'll see we're, we're shaving off a very tiny amount here. Uh, less than a millimeter ultimately is uh, is what we are, are trying to cut here. And as long as we can get roughly uh, fairly close to 52 millimeters, that will be good for us. So we turn the machine off, get our calipers, unlock it, and measure. Uh, so that is... 51 and 51 and three quarters, 51.8 uh, millimeters. That's that's really close to 52 millimeters. That is going to be sufficient unto the day. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a little more fine tune adjustments, and let's go ahead and cut a bunch of 52 millimeter strips. All right, we got our 52 millimeter strips set. So now we need to go to the 45. So we're going to unlatch that uh, and uh, pull out our digital calipers just to show you all the all the strips that we got here. Uh, let's go ahead and set that aside real quick here. Uh, let's go ahead and, and grab the calipers. We're going to set these to 45 millimeters. Well, pretty much exact here. Let's give that a moment. Just like with the 52 millimeters, we're going to set that. We're going to put our spacer in, and we're going to grab one of the strips, a uh, spacer I meant to say, uh, wedge here. Uh, we're going to grab one of the strips, and we're going to cut ourselves a, uh, a 45 millimeter long um, strip. Uh, you, can, you can see you can also measure that way there. I think that's actually pretty good. Let's go ahead and see how this cuts. Turn it on, grab the strip, pull it through. This is my preferred method for cutting these strips like this. Set that aside, turn it off, and let's unlatch the calipers, and let's measure. So we have messed up the zeroing on that. Let's go ahead and turn it off back on. Let's re-zero it. Uh, there's a little zero button at the bottom. All right, let's try that again. That is really good. That is that is good enough for me. All right, let's secure those down more. We're gonna leave this set at 45 degree, 45 millimeters for the vast duration of this. All right, with that set, um, this is what I call a blank. By the way, if you ever refer to this, it is 45 on the side, 52 long, and this is gonna be what we're gonna be cutting our hexagons out of. All right, let's go ahead and cut a whole bunch of blanks.
All right, so we got a whole lot of these blanks cut. Now we're going to cut them into hexagons. So again, we have got these 52 long, 45 wide. Uh, and we have to start off by sort of dividing this. We're, we're gonna cut the corners off of this per se. So take this other hexagon and uh, you'll see what I'm referring to here. Um, the width there is 45 and you'll see the uh, the corners uh, like that. They are pretty much straight in the middle. And we gotta chop those off here. It's 120 degrees internal, but it is 60 degrees um, from the 90 degree angle. So we're gonna be using the 60 degree mark here in a moment. What we do, first off, take your digital calipers, set them at 22 and a half millimeters. Uh, this is half of 45, or if you're not using uh, 45 as your hex size, half of whatever your hex size is. Lay the top part along the edge and then use the other side to scribe down the middle. We're gonna be pushing an indent into the foam like so. And then to make sure we're even, just go on the other side and strike it there, and yep, looks good. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do this on all sides, like so. Uh, and even though this is sort of our test or calibration piece, uh, we'll still be able to use this in the end, especially when we're gonna be covering a bunch of the stuff up. All right, looking good. Perfect. Yeah, just be on the safe side. All right. So we got our calibration blank. Now, grab our original Proxon fence. Uh, and uh, the nice thing about this is it does have a sort of protractor built in. And the uh, the fact that this actually slides like this is actually gonna be critical to make this easy for us. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna set this in the track on the side here. Uh, and we are going to set this so that the fence is gonna be setting at that 60 degree mark. Uh, you'll see that 60 degree mark there. It is both on the thing there and also on the fence as well. So you set that in and you're gonna lock in the angle. Uh, we're not gonna be pushing too much against this side, so this is gonna hold pretty well. And especially since we're not gonna extend a big lever on the end of that to, to push against. Uh, and we're not gonna lock it into the track because we're gonna be sliding this back and forth like this. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and zoom in a bit. So you see what we're doing here is we're taking the blank and we're trying to get it so that when we push it, being it held at 60 degrees like this, it will butt up against that. I use a bit of scrap here that I've uh, uh, sort of just kept an eye on there uh, uh, for constant use and I'll use this to push up against the bottom of the aluminum so I can get a flat piece to butt this up against to um, pretty consistently and uh, what you do uh, is you sit there you hold uh, you're, you're, you're holding in place and you are moving the um, the little bit of aluminum back and forth and once you get it set the way you want, I'd say use a bit of, uh, you saw just a second ago there, um, yellow tape to lock it in. Uh, and then you hold it against and you turn the machine on and you press it forward a couple of times. Uh, then you bring it over to the left. Since we're gonna be mirroring the 45 degree edges, you just simply put it on one edge and push through, put it on the other edge and pull back through and you have yourself a hexagon. That's actually all there is to it. Uh, now, uh, the edge is not perfect. The corner's not perfect there. It is a little bit short. Um, but uh, as you see here, uh, uh, when we go through and uh, measure it, it is, eh, it's about a millimeter short, millimeter and a half short. Um, so, but the, the sides are pretty much spot on. 45 millimeters or as close as I care about worrying about getting here. Now, uh, when you get a good setup, um, it's I think it's a good idea to go through and make marks. I've done this previously. Uh, so let's, let me just zoom out here a little bit. Um, let's go ahead and undo that tape. And 
Let me do a little bit of adjustment here. So you see that I went ahead at one point previous. I made the adjustments and I got it as perfect as I could. Uh, and I made some marks on the bottom so that I could line this back up later. It's not a perfect solution, but it seems to work pretty effectively for me here. Uh, and this gets me uh, with a uh, with a correctly sized blank. Uh, this will get me as good as I can get. And I'm using that, that uh, yellow tape to lock it in so it's not going to slide further. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, go back to the cutting surface uh, and uh, get rid of that, that debris here. If you, if you have any idea what to do with those little triangles, let me know. I'm, I'm sort of at a loss. But you'll see how I have it locked on like that. So we put the we butt it up against the bottom, cut it through, move it back, flip it over, cut it through again, move over to the side, cut it at 45 uh, millimeters, and then 45 millimeters. And that, the corners are a lot better, uh, in my opinion. Uh, and we're still at the 45 millimeters, like so. And this time we are a lot closer to the... Um, to the 52 millimeters. Still not perfect, but it'll be good enough, especially with glue and everything else in between the different hexes. So, let's go ahead and cut a whole bunch of hexagons. So there we have it. Uh, we have a, a whole lot of hexes cut um, and a pretty efficient process for mass producing these things. Uh, these are going to be sort of our Lego bricks. Um, uh, the things that we're, I'm going to be using to piece together the different maps that I'm going to create for Battletech. And you can see here how they, they fit together pretty nicely. Um, in the next video, I'm going to go over some of the basic assembly methods that I use, um, and uh, then from there, uh, I'm going to be uh, doing additional videos on how I create different parts of the map, like planes, water, and uh, so forth. Uh, as I uh, iterated in the beginning of the video, this process can be used for any length of hex. Um, also, while I am using half-inch XPS foam, uh, this is the pink insulation foam you can get at the big box store. You can use this for probably pretty much uh, any size foam that you want to cut, um, any thickness I should say, and if you're measuring out the correct dimensions, you just follow the same process uh, and adjust accordingly. So uh, that's it. I hope you all have enjoyed the video. Uh, and uh, if this does interest you, uh, please consider subscribing. And I will see you on the next one. Take care.